Welcome, everybody. It's nice to have you here. And today I'd like to share with you uh, one of the most fundamental topics uh, for success in your life in anything that you want success at, and that is the power of intention. Um, it's, it's on the one hand, it's extraordinarily simple. And then like so many things that are extraordinarily simple, it's uh, very complicated for us <laughs> because we make it complicated. So hopefully today's talk will make it less complicated. We'll see. Um, but if nothing else, uh, my, my main aim here is to make it more accessible and to give you more confidence so that you know how to work with your intention, uh, that you have confidence in the power of your intention and that you can start to see how working with your intention uh, is one of your fundamental powers that allows you to achieve success, again, in any domain of your life, whether that's in business, relationship, uh, health, what, spiritual growth, whatever it is that you want to achieve in your life, understanding intention is super important. Um, because a lot of the time what happens is people get so hung up on uh, things that are downstream from intention. And so they're, they, they're working with things that are of less, have lesser power. So their energy gets diluted. They become sort of dispersed. They get confused, frustrated, and uh, therefore they don't get the good results, at least not as good of results. <clears throat> Whereas if you really can understand the importance and power of intention, then it simplifies things in a, in a, to, to a significant extent. <clears throat> so hopefully that makes sense. And um, <clears throat> just to make sure that everybody who's here, uh, know, you can know and have confidence that you're in the right place. Let me just share with you the overarching intention of this meeting and all the meetings that I offer, which is to support you in self-realization, which is to know yourself, to know your powers, and to know your relationship with reality. And this should give you confidence and remove fear so that you can be fully yourself, enjoy your life, and achieve your true heart desires, satisfy your purpose in this lifetime. And uh, that's it. So if that sounds like it's of interest to you, then I guess you're in the right place. Um, and so to that end, I address a variety of topics that are all really aimed at encouraging and supporting that fundamental uh, goal. Because pretty much, for, I mean, from my perspective, anything else is of lesser value. Because if you, you can use a lot of the kind of the knowledge that I share to achieve lesser goals, uh, but if that's all you do, then ultimately you will be dissatisfied. And then what's the point, right? You know, if you get the billion dollars and the, you know, the perfect spouse and the perfect house and the perfect car and the perfect whatever, and, you know, you've got the six pack abs and everything, <laughs> but you're not satisfied, then what's the point? So from my perspective, it's all about experiencing and knowing that fundamental satisfaction of knowing who you really are. As I said, it removes fear. It gives confidence uh, and true satisfaction. Then you can actually enjoy your life. Then you can enjoy the six pack abs if you want <laughs> or whatever else, you know. Um, and so just to make it clear, because sometimes people have this idea and I, I know I, I talk about this frequently in, I'm going to say it again today, just for the sake of clarity, um, because sometimes people have this idea that desire is is in conflict with true satisfaction. They think that desire uh, is in conflict with true spiritual growth, that desire is in conflict with true self-realization. And I understand that that is a common uh, view of things. And there, there's a certain half truth to it but like all half truths it's only half true and therefore it's not really true and uh, so half truths can get us into a lot of trouble because if you're if you're holding on to a half truth and you're believing that that is the whole truth then that's not going to work out very well for you so here i want to clear clear this up 
And so from my perspective and what I share, desire is not the enemy. Desire is not problematic. We just have to work with desire intelligently. In fact, desire is a fundamental uh, quality, we could say, of creation. So creation is, is it, it exists because of desire. It would be impossible for there to be any creation without desire. This is a fairly important thing to understand. Because if we say, on the one hand, desire is the enemy, I must get rid of all desire, uh, then, and, but we are not understanding that desire is fundamental to creation, to life, then we have this underlying conflict because we're basically fighting against life. We're fighting against existence. We're saying, I have to get rid of desire, which is tantamount to saying, I have to get rid of life. And this is a position that many people find themselves in, and it doesn't, as I say, it doesn't work out very well. So um, again, from my perspective, it's important to understand that desire is not the enemy. Now, attachment to outcome is obviously highly problematic. Um, because the thing about outcome is that outcome is occurring in the manifest realm and the nature of the manifest realm is that it's always in motion. So nothing remains constant in the manifest realm, which means that things are coming together, things are moving apart, things come, things go. And uh, so if you're attached to outcome, then that's just a setup for suffering. <laughs> so that part I would agree with, you know, the attachment is problematic in terms of if you if you want happiness and satisfaction, then attachment is antithetical to that. Um, but that does not mean desire is problematic. So desire and attachment are not exactly identical. They're not the same thing. You can have a desire free of attachment. And uh, so the desire in this view is, as I say, it's what gives rise to creation. It's what gives rise to experience. It's what gives rise to life. So it's not problematic. And what it offers is just, it's an avenue of creation. It's a way in which creation can occur. Or rather, it is the way in which creation occurs. So the desire is followed by the, the uh, knowledge in order to satisfy that desire. And then the action that needs to take place in order to uh, express that desire. And that's what creation is. And what is the purpose of that? Well, for uh, self-knowledge, right? It's self, self-realization. It's like, I have a desire to know myself. I'm going to uh, express that so that I can have some experience of that. I want to experience myself. So I am, but I want to experience myself. It's through the experience of myself that I gain this knowledge of myself. And so that's, so again, desire is not problematic. Desire is um, actually helpful in the process of self-realization. So it's just about knowing how to work with desire in a skillful way. And uh, as I have often pointed out, and I will point out right now, um, when I say that desire is not problematic, I do want to be clear that that does not mean that uh, indulging all desire is a wise approach. Why? Because... Um, if we're using desire as a vehicle for self-realization, then it would only follow that we would want to uh, satisfy or fulfill those desires that are actually ours. Uh, because if you're if you're pursuing other desires, then that's not likely to give you much information about yourself, at least not in a direct, in a, not in a direct way. So. That's one problem with it. And then the other problem with it is that it takes it typically takes some time uh, to actually satisfy desires. And so if you've and maybe I shouldn't have to tell you this, but if you take a look, you'll probably notice that you've got a lot of desire unless you're a very rare bird. Uh, you know, there are maybe those few beings who have very, very few desires. But most of us are just filled to the brim with desire. We've got so many desires that are coming out the yin yang. And uh, so it's just all day and all night, just desire, 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 desire. So if you have to uh, satisfy each of those desires by manifesting them, manifesting an outcome for each one of those, then because each of those is going to take some amount of time, that ends up adding up to quite a lot of time. And uh, if you did the math on that, then that might not work out advantageously for you in this lifetime. 
right? That might just lead you to your deathbed and you still have more desires that are not fulfilled. Whereas from my perspective, the goal is to satisfy all the desires within the lifetime so that there's nothing left unresolved, uh, unsatisfied. And that what that means is then you actually have complete self-knowledge. See how that works. Once you've satisfied all the desires that are actually your desires, that will give you complete self-knowledge. Uh, and so, and that's the aim, right? Self-knowledge equals self-realization equals self-mastery. So the satisfaction of your true desires is, from my perspective, a very desirable thing. It's a very good thing. It's a very helpful thing. Um, but again, we have to know how to work with it intelligently. So step one is to get clarity on what your desires are versus those which are not your desires. And uh, so, as I say, we're just filled to the brim with desires, most of us at least. And um, oftentimes we're taking in more desires than we're getting rid of. So we just keep accumulating more desires. Uh, and those desires show up in an awful lot of ways. So it's not just desire for uh, acquisition of things. Often, you know, like, obviously there's that. I want the power. I want sex. I want money. I want uh, status. I want all these things. Okay, so desire acquisition. Um, but then there's also desire for revenge. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, we got, you know, desire to be to be uh, um, validated. You know, a lot of these kinds of desires that we keep getting more and more and more of them. Most of us, we just keep accumulating more throughout a lifetime because we're not resolving them quickly enough and we keep accumulating more. Um, but as I say, most of those desires are not actually truly yours. They're just things that you've acquired because you didn't have the knowledge to be able to dis distinguish those that are actually yours and let go of everything else. And so a test is if you can let go of it, it's not yours. If you can't let go of it, it's probably yours. So one way to do this, to approach this, is just to learn the skill of letting go. Uh, and so maybe that's a skill that a lot of people don't have. So I guess I could guide that briefly right now. Um, uh, yeah, I'll do that. So you could, uh, test this out. Um, you could close the eyes if it's comfortable for you. If it's not comfortable to close the eyes, you needn't. And just to be clear about the purpose of closing the eyes, it's just to reduce the visual stimulation, to reduce the amount of noise. It just allows you to have a little bit more focus on uh, what's happening apart from the visual stimulation. That's it. So uh, if you're able to comfortably close the eyes, then th as I say, this will just reduce that amount of noise in the nervous system. If you're not comfortable closing the eyes, then you just have to deal with the fact that there's more noise. That's it. Okay, but uh, now you could just notice that there's content, there's noise, there's stuff happening. So there are thoughts, there are sensations. And uh, and then there are associations between all these things. So, you know, if you just noticed that there were just thoughts happening, but they weren't attached to anything, they weren't attached to any feelings or any of the mental images or anything, then they would just come and go and that would be it. And uh, similarly, if there were sensations, but the sensations were not associated with any thoughts or images, then the sensations would just be coming and going and that would be it. There wouldn't be any problem there. It would just be content coming and going. And similarly with the images, so mental images, uh, if they were not associated with anything, then there would just be mental images coming and going and it would not be problematic. Now, uh, for most of us, there are a lot of associations between these things. So there are associations between the thoughts and the feelings and the thoughts and the images and to varying extents with the thoughts and the, uh, the, 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 the smells and the thoughts and the tastes and the thoughts and the sounds and so forth. But it's those associations. And of course, it could be not just the thoughts associated with the things. It could also be the other senses associated with one another. So the more of that stuff that gets uh, lumped together and associated, the stronger the sense of it might be. 
but it's really just the point here is just to notice it's the associations. So without the association, there's nothing, it's not sticky at all. It just comes and goes. There's nothing that kind of sticks around. It just comes and goes. Thought, another thought, another thought. None of it really means anything. It's just noise. It comes and it goes. And, you know, mental image, mental image, mental image. They just come and go. They don't mean anything. The sensations are just one sensation, then another sensation, then another sensation, but they don't mean anything, so they just come and go. But when they're associated, then they tend to be stickier. Then they hang around, they bounce around, they uh, lead to reactivity within the nervous system and in the body, and the whole drama will ensue. So learning to let go is really just learning to be present and noticing things as they are, just noticing that there's just experience that is happening and it doesn't mean anything and none of it is actually related to any of the rest of it other than the fact that it may be co-arising, but that's it. And you know, we could even say that it tends to co-arise because it co-arose at some previous time. And so it just creates that tendency. But apart from that, none of this stuff actually goes together. It doesn't actually inherently go together. It's just an association that we've formed. And those associations form attachments, either positive or negative, but they're attachments nonetheless, which then make it sticky, which then leads to the drama, which then leads to confusion which then leads to the accumulation of all kinds of desires, most of which are not even ours. So it becomes this vicious cycle. But here it's possible just to notice that all of this stuff is just happening. It's just sound, image, thought, feeling. It's all it is, it's just happening. None of it goes together, none of it means anything. It's just noise, it's just energy, it's just happening, just movement. So this is the fundamental skill, I could say, is just learning to relate to all of it in this open way of not attaching to it, not uh, assigning any meaning to it, not believing the meaning, not believing that there is a meaning inherent just because things are co-arising. And it can be very helpful in this process to slow down internally meaning just to allow for everything to relax, just to allow more space between everything. And this is fully within your power to do. So breath awareness can be very helpful for this. Not trying to control the breath, but just being aware of the breath. It allows more space. It allows things to slow down. It allows more awareness. It shifts a lot of things internally that are conducive to letting go. Uh, so that's that's all I'm going to guide for that. If you have your eyes closed, uh, when you're ready to transition to an open-eyed state, please do so slowly. If you just fling the eyes open, it's unnecessarily shocking for your nervous system. So just do it slowly so that you can easily integrate that experience. And possibly you could be aware that the visual content is also just happening in the same space, the same as the mental imagery and the thoughts and the sounds and all the rest of it. It's just something that's coming and going in the same space of awareness. So this is, as I say, uh, I, from my view, it's a pretty fundamental skill. It's very helpful for many things to learn to let go because it will give you better perspective and uh, and then... It's really helpful for learning to let go, obviously, of those desires that are not actually yours. So the impulse will be there because there's something that got associated, right? Like you, um, <clears throat> if if you have a desire, just use some some examples. If you, if you have a desire, I should be a lawyer, I should be a lawyer, I should be a lawyer. Um, maybe that's actually your desire. Great. But it's possible that you just got that desire because you wanted to please your parents, your parents wanted you to be a lawyer. And so what happened was through repetition over and over and over there, there were just the events uh, 
uh, were such that there was enough repetition of the pressure and the thought I should be a lawyer and the feeling of that pressure and the desire for approval and associations with, you know, survival being linked to pleasing parents and things like this. So that then that desire formed, even though it's not actually your desire. So again, it could be your desire, but it might not be your desire. So uh, in that case, then you just learn through this practice of letting go. You just keep letting go and keep letting go and keep letting go. And w if it's not your desire, what will happen is eventually there will be a relief. You know, like, oh, thank goodness I don't have to be a lawyer. <laughs> I, I never wanted to be a lawyer. You know, I always wanted to be a dancer. Um, and so great, you know, then then you should feel that relief. There should be a, a, a greater openness and, and happiness that arises because your energy isn't being sucked up into that um, unhelpful and 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 not, not non-true association that was occupied in your nervous system. Um, and the, you know, but this is okay. Another example could be you think I need the I need the big house. I need the big, you know, the big fancy house, the expensive house in that neighborhood, whatever, you know. And uh but maybe, and maybe you do genuinely have that desire, but maybe you don't. Maybe you just form that desire because uh, you watched Beverly Hills 90210 too many times. And that just, you know, you just got, got the desire that way because of television or whatever, right? So the associations are formed usually through repetition, not always. Sometimes they can happen because of, um, so, you know, also understand that my, modern marketing uh has capitalizes upon uh an understanding of how these associations are formed and so they've learned to be able to create or facilitate the formation of these associations very powerfully and very quickly so um as i say a lot of the time the associations are formed over time with a lot of repetition but um they can also be formed very quickly relatively through um, the certain, if certain factors are present. So if there's a high enough intensity, uh, then we can form associations very quickly. Uh, and then if the other factors are, are used skillfully in like in modern marketing, then it's possible to form that those associations very rapidly so that then that desire can be there. You know, you like, you start a webinar, a sales webinar, and uh, you have, you don't even know anything about what's being sold. You don't, you maybe didn't even know something was going to be sold. You're so naive, right? You enter into the sales webinar and you're thinking, oh, this is I'm just going to learn the five steps that are going to help me in my life. You you know you you didn't know that they were going to sell you something that it was you know it's going to be a 997 product. <laughs> um. So, but by the end of the 60 90 minutes or whatever you feel that your life could not be complete without that thing, you know, that's that. So that association has been formed very strongly for you, um, at least temporarily. So learning how to let go, very, very helpful. I mean, it will help you to let go of desires that are not yours, both things that you've accumulated over time. Plus it will help you to not form them unnecessarily. So you, if you wanted with that skill, you could sit through sales webinars and then not buy. If you wanted to have that skill, like a superpower, you could do that. Um, you would have better things to do with your life at that point. But if you wanted to do, have that superpower, you could. So learning to let go, a lot of words just to say learning to let go is helpful. Uh, it will help you to learn to let go of those desires that are not actually yours. But some of those desires will still stick around. Uh, those are yours. Because those will help you to learn the lessons that you're here to learn. You want to learn cer certain things about yourself. You came into this lifetime because the lifetime was is the result of those desires to know yourself in certain ways. And so that's why those desires remain because they're fundamental to you. They're fundamental to this lifetime. Uh, and so you, you can uh, then uh, actually manifest those. You, you, now you could let go of them. Um, I should say that that also is a valid path. That's the path of renunciation. And uh, so it actually leads to the same thing because ultimately it's it's all the self. So however it's resolved, it will ultimately give that same self knowledge. But the thing is that 
for most of us, that's just a very difficult path, right? Because we're here in this world and we've, we've already formed attachments and um, you just have to be honest and realistic about it. Are you going to go to the Himalayas and sit in a cave for the rest of your life? You're not, I mean, very few of you will. I mean, maybe somebody will, but most of us will not. Uh, and so then it's foolish of us to say, well, I should renounce. Ren renunciation is the only way. I, then you're basically just saying, well, my life is a waste. I'm just going to wait out this life and make no progress because I have these attachments and uh, and I'm not willing to renounce. And so my life is a waste. Well, that sounds awful. Please don't do that to yourself. Instead, just acknowledge that, oh, I, I have attachments. I'm going to stay in this world. I'm not going to go to a cave in the Himala Himalayas. But good news I still have a path that will work for me. I can um, get clear on what my true desires are and I can manifest them. And through that, I can gain the necessary self-knowledge that will give me the same thing that I would uh, receive if I went to the cave in the Himalayas and sat there in meditation for the next 50 years under the guidance of, uh, of, a, of a master, right? So I can achieve the same outcome, but in this world. So just a different path. But again, you want to clarify what are your true desires, and then you want to focus on them. You want to actually uh, see them through instead of getting distracted. Because if you're distracted, then obviously you're not going to satisfy those desires. So then you will not have made the necessary progress to get what you came here for. So you have to learn not only what are your desires, but then you still have to have this, you have to cultivate these fundamental skills of um, being able to keep your attention on something long enough. You have to have sustained attention on something. But then the question is, well, what is it that you're going to sustain your attention on? And here we get to the intention. So intention is um, very, very, very important in this whole process because uh, you have to actually know what it is that you want to manifest. Otherwise, you're really just wasting your time. So a lot of people get stuck um, where they, they really are not clear on what they want. And so then I hope that it starts to become clear why that's, why that's not a good position to remain in. Because if you're not clear on what you want, I'll just try to break it down. Okay, so your ultimate goal for everybody, everybody's ultimate goal is to know yourself, self-realization to have absolute clarity on who you are, what your powers are, and what your relationship with reality is. That's everybody's goal, whether you know it or not. Uh, so then we could break it down. So some people are going to achieve that goal by going to a cave in the Himalayas or wherever, the renunciate path or a monastery or whatever they're going to do. That's So that's one possibility. But that's for a severe minority. Most people are not going to do that. So for the rest of us, then we need a path that allows us to succeed without renun without renouncing the world. And so what I'm proposing then is that uh, we can succeed in that, but we have to get clarity on what our true desires are. And then once we've gotten clarity on what our true desires are, we have to develop clarity of 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 increasing clarity about that, right? So that's not just a one-time thing. It's not like you just say, okay, well, now I know that my true desire is to be a dancer. That's not sufficient because if if that was it, then that then once you had that realization, then you you know it'd be like an explosion of light, and there'd be you know uh, you'd graduate basically. Like congratulations, you figured it out. Now you know who you are. Um, but it's not like that. Then there's then you have to actually increasingly gain more clarity about it. So it's a refinement process. Because you now you have the seed of it. You now you know, oh, I, I desire to be a dancer. Okay, that's the seed. But it has to actually come to fruition in this path, in the path of, of, of being in the world and fulfilling your desires. You actually have to fulfill them. They have to come to fruition. So then you need to continue to put your attention on that. Um, and you need to uh, gain crystal clarity about what the fruition is because at that point that you have gained that it is so and then you have succeeded that's how it works and so this is somewhat what i'm saying here might sound like 
um, it might be falling a little bit flat, because, but actually it's really incredibly powerful. So I'm going to just kind of dance around it a few times just to see if I can uh, say it in a way that will make sense because where, where you can understand the power of what's being said. So you don't, because a lot of the time people get, think, oh, I need a lot of techniques. I need to, I need to have the right techniques. I need to read more books. I need to, uh, you know, watch more videos. I need to go to more workshops. I need this. I need that. I need the next thing. And, um, it's not true. You, I mean, it's true that you need the right knowledge. You, that's absolutely true. I mean, you know, if you don't have the right knowledge, then uh, you, you can't take action on it. But once you have the right knowledge, which I'm providing you here, then all you need to do is to take action on it. Getting more knowledge beyond that will not actually be helpful. You don't need more theoretical knowledge. You just need to apply what it is that you already have. That's how you get the results. So never ever does it work that you just acquire more knowledge and then somehow magically that does it for you. You actually have to apply the right knowledge and then that's what gives you the results. So you don't need more techniques. Does that mean that there are some techniques that m might be uh, helpful? I mean, sure, there are some techniques that can be helpful, but the point is the tech. The techniques are techniques. The technique is to help to assist you in having a direct experience, to realize something for yourself, to, to recognize a fundamental power that you have. That's the purpose of the technique. The technique cannot do for you something that you cannot that's not already within you. That would be impossible. You know, it's like if you wanted to. Uh, to, to use the example of dancing, since I brought that up several times. Okay, so if you think about dancing, I'm sure that I'm not, I'm not a dancer. I don't know much about dancing, but um, I'm sure there are many techniques for dancing. And so might those techniques be able to uh, give certain kind, ex expedite certain kinds of outcomes? Sure. But can the technique give you anything that's not already inherent in you? No, it's impossible. The, the technique can only assist you in revealing something that's already present within you. Okay? If you want to dance, then the dance is already, you are the dancer. The dance comes from within you. It's not from outside. It's impossible that it would come from outside. So the techniques can only support you in re revealing that which is already within you. And so this is always true. Techniques are only capable of revealing to you that which is already in you. So you don't need the technique to, add something to you. At best, the technique can reveal something that's already in you. Uh, and so when you understand your fundamental powers, then the then really the techniques become superfluous. That's the right term. Um, and so here I'm wanting to point out you really want one of the most fundamental uh, powers you have which is the power of intention. Because in really in if you're on the path of which you are, if you're on if you're on the path of um of attainment, meaning the path of attaining or fulfilling your desire, then you need to master your fundamental power, your fundamental creative powers. And your most fundamental creative powers are attention and intention. Um, I mean, all of that is built upon what we could call awareness, but awareness is not directed. Awareness is, we could say, static, whereas attention and intention are dynamic. You can actually work with them. Uh, so your fun, I would say your fundamental powers are attention and intention. So you uh, direct your uh, awareness with the power of attention and what you direct it at is intention and this is the fundamental creative process and a lot of people will i i know will be dismissive of this and they'll think oh well that that's that how could that possibly help me you know i mean that's not that's not fancy it's not shiny it's not sexy what does that do for me um you know that didn't give me some sort of uh you know ex feeling of like, you know, psychedelic explosion or anything. So that can't be 
that can't be useful. And then they move on to the next thing, you know, the next, they're going to go to the next ayahuasca retreat or the next breath work uh, thing or the next whatever. And okay, you know, those will give you experiences and that's interesting and maybe valuable, maybe not. But, um, but again, all of those things ultimately are, should be leading you to the realization of your fundamental powers. Because if you have to go to, if you have to, take ayahuasca in order to uh, get something, in order to get something of fundamental value to you, then, um, then what that is saying is that you are incomplete, right? If, if, if ayahuasca is necessary, which is something that you have to take from the outside in order to get what you need, then you are incomplete. But it's not true, right? So if you pay attention to what is actually happening during any of these experiences, whatever the experience might be, under whatever this, whatever the conditions or circumstances, uh, whatever substances may or may not be involved, actually the experience is happening completely subjectively. It's always in you, and it's not actually coming from the outside. It would be impossible for it to come from the outside. So each of these experiences is offering you, if you pay attention, the opportunity to actually learn about your fundamental creative powers. You could also just take the more direct path, which is what I'm proposing here, which is just to start to recognize your fundamental powers of attention and intention. And when, so when you have clarity of intention and you can sustain your attention on it sufficiently, that is how creation occurs and therefore that which that intention which you are sustaining your attention on is manifest at all levels so whatever it is that you want whatever desire you have that you want to manifest this is how it works fundamentally and if you're doing anything else uh, then it's less direct which means less efficient so, I mean, I guess the, 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 there's a, I should say, it, it, if, if you're not willing or able, willing, I guess, to, to actually go the direct route, uh, then we could say that less direct ways could be, in a, in a sense, useful, like training wheels. But really, I just encourage you to go the direct route because it's going to give you better results. You'll get faster results. So the getting clarity on your actual desire is of utmost importance. And once you have succeeded in gaining that clarity on your on your desired outcome, on your desire, and all you have to do is sustain your attention on it and it has to manifest at all levels because that's how the creative process is working. So you should respect and appreciate the importance of intention. If you overlook it, then you will not, you should not and cannot expect realistically to get good results. You might be able to get uh, some uh, flash in the pan results. Okay. So it's absolutely true that you can, some people can get certain short-term results without totally getting clarity, um, on their desired outcome, but you'll notice that they are not sustained because you, you can't get that if you haven't gotten the clarity of what you actually, of your true desire. So you have to get clarity on the intention. How do you do that? Well, every day, Put your attention for a little bit on your desired outcome. I mean, you know, practice makes perfect. If you just keep doing that, then you're going to get better at it. If you don't do that, then you're not going to get better at it. Uh, sorry to break it to you. I know people sometimes they want something that's, you know, some seems more exciting or something. Um, but honestly, you, the truth is usually not like that. The truth, the truth is usually pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. It's kind of the stuff that on, in some ways you already knew. Um, and if you just do this 
the, the, the wonderful thing is it will, you'll get good results. It will give you so much better results than anything else that you're doing. So, um, so number one, practice letting go as, as much as possible and of anything of all your desires and those that are not yours will fall away. What this will do is it will bring into focus those desires, which are yours, which you cannot let go of. Do not try to suppress these. Um, your mind on an, on an intellectual level, because your your intellect is very sophisticated and very adult and you know very uh, and, and tends to suppress a lot of things, it will likely try to suppress many of these things. It will say, "Oh, I don't really want that. Nobody would really want that. That's stupid. I can't have that, so I'm not going to want it. Uh, it's too late for me, so I won't want it. I'll just suppress it, you know, or that would be inconvenient, so I'll just suppress it. Do that at your own peril, uh, because again, you have to understand that your life is exists because of desire, and the fundamental desires that make up your life are the purpose of your life. So if you suppress them, then you're suppressing the purpose of your life, and then you're going to feel purposeless, and you're not going to feel very good. Whereas if you are willing to have the courage just to acknowledge and accept and embrace your true desires... Uh, it will work much better for you. So, so again, that process is let go of everything that can be let go of. It will help you to have focus on the things that remain. And the things that remain are your desires for you to satisfy. So, because that's the purpose of your life. That's what has actually given rise to your life. Just another way to understand this um, is... Also, you can, it can, you can look at what is it that hurts you the most? Because the things that just keep hurting you over and over and over, um, if you're not able to resolve that just through letting go, then that also is pointing to your true desire or desires, just in, in the ne negative sense, right? So you have to then look to see what is, what is the positive, what is the inverse of the thing that's hurting you the most. And I often give this example. So if you're somebody who's struggling over and over and over with material security, you just cannot seem to uh, hold on to housing or to money, and you're just struggling and anxious and worried and frustrated and depressed about this, and it's just occupying a lot of your uh, mental, psychic, and emotional space, then uh, chances are there's something there for you like maybe you have a desire to know true abundance. So that would be useful for you to actually welcome that desire and start to put your attention on it so that you can get clarity of what that actually is. Because see, notice a lot of the time, I mean, almost without fail, these desires which are which we've largely suppressed or avoided uh, or ignored are um are uh things that we don't we don't because we've tried to avoid them we really don't have that much clarity about our actual desired outcome you you know it's one thing to say well yeah i want abundance you know i want i want to feel secure i want to feel uh peaceful and happy in relationship to finances and material uh security great but that's that's a start it's a helpful start but that that how does that translate into an actual lived experience? That's where you have to continue to get clarity on, it, uh, so that you can actually know what that looks like and feels like. Because only then will it be real for you, and only when it's real for you will you learn what you need to learn in order to fully satisfy satisfy that desire. Importantly. Sometimes people will will try to bypass this because again, it's just more suppression. They'll say, "Well, you know, I don't really, I don't really care about money. I don't really need money. Um, I, you know, everybody's going to die, and it doesn't really matter anyway. So who cares?" And uh, on and on and on. You know, you can use all kinds of things to justify the continued suppression and avoidance of of the desire. But um, so what? The point is not, of course, the point is not about the money. The, the, the point is about you. The point is about knowing yourself. And if you have the desire for the money, it's because whatever is necessary 
whatever clarity you have to gain through sustaining your attention on that outcome will give you this necessary self-knowledge to satisfy that. So the actual satisfaction is not the material outcome. The actual satisfaction is the self-knowledge. But again, the, the material outcome is a valid pathway if approached correctly in order to give you what it is that you truly want, which is the self-knowledge. But if you suppress it, you can't get it, right? Because it's a path. It's, there's, a, there's a journey that has to be taken so that you can get that clarity and that fulfillment and that self-knowledge. If you don't take those steps, then you won't satisfy that. You'll stay stuck because you'll remain ignorant. And if you just keep saying, well, nobody really needs money and money is just false and I don't really need money and everybody's going to die anybody, anyway, so who cares? And You're just fooling yourself. I mean, again, if that's a true desire that you have. For some people, it's, some people it's not, right? So some people can really let go. They might have anxiety about money, but if they really keep letting go, letting go, letting go, then they'll get clear and they'll realize, oh, it's not about money. I don't care about money. Never actually cared about money at all. Uh, fine. Then it's then for them, it's not that. But for somebody who can't fully let go of that, it is their desire. So don't suppress it. So <clears throat> having, so what sustaining enough attention regularly to gain clarity on your intention is so important. I know I keep saying it, but I did tell you I was going to keep saying it. I think I said that I was going to keep saying it because there's something for many of us, our, our brains just want to dismiss it. They just want to say, okay, but that's not interesting enough. Or they'll say, I already get it. I already understand it. What What's next? Well, there is one little piece that's next, but before you can get to that, you really have to be crystal clear and accept and understand the importance of intention. If you don't have clarity on what you want, you're fooling yourself. You're not going to be able to take other steps. You have to get clarity on that. So please do yourself a favor. If you want success in your life and you are, and you've gained enough clarity now to realize that you are not on a path of renunciation, you're actually on a path of attainment with the purpose of self-realization, with the purpose of the revelation of self-knowledge, then you owe it to yourself to have form a habit of putting your attention every day on your desired outcome. So again, release any desire that is not yours, those that remain that you cannot release, those are yours that you must fulfill. Prioritize them. I didn't say that before, but if you've, if you've got five of these things, um, prioritize what are the most important? What are the ones that really you, you, you've got to, you have to get clarity on those as soon as possible. So um, reduce that to the absolute maximum, minimum, absolute, absolute minimum possible. If you could reduce it to just one um, to focus on right now, that would be really excellent. It would give you great results. But sometimes people feel like, no, there's two that I have. They're really both really high priority. Okay, great. So you've got two. If it's three, it's acceptable. Beyond three, you're fooling yourself. You're not going to get good results if you're trying to focus on three things at the same time. So, <clears throat> I mean, you'll never be able to focus on three things at the same time, but three things, uh, you know, one at a time, but in the same time frame, right? Don't, 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 don't work with more than three intentions at a time um, and preferably fewer, but three is acceptable, maximum. So prioritize, figure out what are the, the top one, two or three intentions that you want, that you need to gain more clarity on. And then every single day, put your attention on these. Now, it might be, let's say, I'll just use an example. Um, financial abundance and security. Okay. So if you're that person who's hurting repeatedly for, um, you, you can't seem to gain financial security, material security, and that's hurting you and you've tried letting go and tried letting go and you can't let go. Great. That's pointing to a true desire for you. So now you know that what you truly desire is financial security and abundance, material security. Okay. So, uh, write that down. Put your attention on that every day. Say, in my imagination, I experience financial and material security and abundance. 
in my imagination, I experience financial security and material security and abundance in my imagination so that this is helpful so that you can bypass the the mind, which otherwise would call you a liar. If you say, I, if you just say, I experience financial security and, and material security and abundance, your mind's going to say, no, you don't, you're a liar. But if you say, in my imagination, then you bypass that resistance and you create through your imagination anyway, so it's fine. So you just say, in my imagination. And you can do that in your imagination. So in then in your imagination, imagine that desired outcome. When you do that, your goal is to actually, so just saying I experience financial and, and material security and abundance, like, okay, that's that's interesting, but what on earth does that mean? It's not really real to you yet. That's why you have to imagine it. You have to put your attention on it so that it gets clearer. So it's not it's not really a, a complete intention yet. It's it's just sort of a it's intention light. It's not a real intention. Uh, so you have to put you have to give the time and energy to it so it gets clearer. So day after day, put your attention on it and imagine it. Now, for most of us, we won't be so fully blocked that we can't make some progress here. So there are some people who will have so many blocks that they can't make any progress. I'll get to that in a second. But most of us will be able to make progress just putting attention on this every day. So you just notice, okay, what, what is that? What does that feel like? What does that look like? I, ha I experience in my imagination, I experience uh, material and financial security and abundance. What is that? Just invite that as a possibility for yourself. Just take a few minutes. And just and don't censor yourself. Just go with it. It's your. It's a creative process. If you're censoring yourself, you're shutting it down. So you just have to be playful, exploratory. There, no, you can't go wrong. Just imagine, and just imagine, and new pathways will be opening up within you. That's the point. That's why you can't censor if you want success, right? You just have to be playful, imaginative creative in the process, just whatever comes, just let it come. And then you can prune, that's fine, you know, like prune away, but only you have to invite the growth first. So let invite the growth, like, oh, maybe this, maybe that. It's like, maybe I've got, you know, I've got, I've got the Rolls Royce and I've got the, uh, you know, the, the five mansions and I've got the, you know, private jet and whatever. And it's like, okay, most of that might be totally stupid and you don't really need it or want it, but, or maybe you do, but if that's what's coming up, fine, because just be playful, imagine. And then once that's there in your imagination, you can look at it, feel into it, uh, play around with it, explore it, and then just see how much truth there is in that. If there's anything that's not totally true, then you can prune it by letting go, right? It's like, oh, no, I don't really need that. I don't really need that. Okay, now you've got more clarity about something, though. Keep doing this day after day. It will get clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. And your goal is that it can become so clear that it's just like remembering something that happened yesterday, where there's no resistance whatsoever in your mind. Because if you think about something that happened yesterday, if you remember what happened yesterday, then it's the same faculties as you use for your imagination. Notice this. It's identical to imagination. The only difference is that with what you call memory, your mind says it happened. It's true. And with what you call just purely imagination, your mind says, that's not real. It didn't happen. But otherwise, they're identical. They're both using exactly the same faculties. So your goal with this process is to imagine such that it's exactly as though you're remembering something that happened yesterday. It should have that same sense of naturalness and reality to it. So you, you're, do, that's your aim. And you can get there by practicing this day after day after day. You don't have to do it for hours every day, just for a few minutes. Be consistent about it though. That's the thing is if you don't do it consistently, you're not going to get results because you your energy goes where you put your attention. So you have to consistently put your attention there to develop that intention because the intention is the power of the creation. It is everything. Your intention is the creation itself. It's not even that which creates, it is the creation. That's the thing that I'm trying to really get through about this. That's You should treat it that way. When you are creating this thing in your imagination, you're refining and clarifying your intention. That is the creation. It is not separate from the creation. It is one and the same. That's how powerful it is. That's how complete it is. That's how important it is. And that's why if you overlook this or dismiss it, 
And you cannot realistically expect to get the creative output that you want because you're overlooking the creation itself. That's the power of the intention. So put your attention there, put your energy into it, because when you clarify that, then you are creating. That is the creative process. There's no, there's nothing really else. It's not like you do that and then something happens. You do that, that is the creation. That's the power of intention. And when you gain enough confidence in that process, what can happen is you will stop doubting and second guessing the power of your intention and undermining it with different conflicting intentions. So notice what happens right now. You could have an intention, I have a million dollars, and then you follow that up with, I can't have a million dollars. I'm not, I'm not smart enough. I'm, I don't have enough connections yet. I don't know enough. I don't have this, that, and the other. I can't have a million dollars. You just squashed your first intention, right? You started this, it's like you're starting a painting you get out the, the canvas, the brushes, the paint, you start to paint on the canvas, and then you come along and with, a, with a, a knife and you cut it all up. That's the power of your intention. You, you're, you're both are intentions. I have a million dollars as an intention, and I can't have a million dollars as an intention. If you follow up, I have a million dollars, but I can't have a million dollars, then you've just destroyed your intention, and then you have to start over again. So... That's the power of your intention. When you have that understanding, you'll stop undermining yourself and you'll understand how important it is that you just keep your attention on the thing that you want so that it is fully formed. And then you'll get very, very fast, quick, powerful results. Now, I did say that for some people, they'll be so blocked that they really can't make much progress just by keeping their attention on their intention and getting clearer that way. And it's also true for everybody that along the way, there will be points in which they get blocked. And so here's the, the next thing that is you can do that will help out with this process. Because uh, in order to be able to, um, to put your, your energy into this creation by clarifying your intention, you have to be able to actually give attention to it. But if there are things that are obscuring that, Okay, so imagine that your uh, that your in that your attention is like seeing something with your eyes. Okay, and so if your and your intention is that which is being seen, so your attention is the act of seeing with the eyes. The intention is what's being seen with the eyes. Well, in order for that process to occur, there has to be a uh, the way has to be cleared between the eyes and what is being seen. If there's something in between those, there's something in that path, it obscures what is being seen. Therefore, it hinders that process of seeing what it is that you want to see, okay? So if we then translate that here, then in our inner process, which mirrors what I've just described, the attention is being placed on the intention. That way between the attention and the intention needs to be clear, otherwise, you can't uh, see the intention. Well, actually, this process of daily cultivating, putting the attention on the intention is really a process of clearing whatever is in the way, fundamentally. I guess you could say it's also about Im impressing upon that, uh, th that, that material that's there, uh, whatever that intention is. But just to keep things simple, it's really fundamentally about clearing the way. So there are certain things that are obscuring that. And just by the power of repeatedly putting your attention on it, it will start to clear the way. But um, oftentimes there, those obscurations are so strong, so um, um, uh, I can't think of the word, non-transparent, I don't know what the word would be, um, opaque, that that becomes very challenging and we can get frustrated and disheartened. Uh, and so it can be very helpful to have a process by which you can remove or clear away those obscurations, anything that's interfering in, in the path between the attention and the intention. So here is where some techniques can be helpful. Again, um, understand that the power of intention is such that if you simply intend 
without contradicting it, and you have confidence in this, that whatever is in the way is cleared, then it is so. So that can happen in time. It should happen in time. This greatly quickens the pace of things where you can just, you're no longer hindered because there seems to be a block. You just say to yourself, you just have the intention. If there's any obscuration, it is now cleared. It's done. It's so. My my attention is purely on my intention. There is nothing that can block me. When you have that clarity and that knowing, it is absolutely done. There's nothing that can contradict that other than you. So if you then say, oh, but I'm not sure it worked. Well, then there you go. You've just followed up with a different intention, which negates the first one. But along the way, most of us don't have that level of confidence to start. So here's where some techniques can be useful. And I have shared, as I did, I shared last week, uh, I think that working, working with these obscurations in the form of limiting beliefs for most of them is very effective and powerful. So that's the number one way that I recommend doing that. So when you are putting your attention daily on your intended desired outcome, uh, be aware of whatever limiting beliefs surface in your mind. So if I'm saying, you know, if my desired intention is I, I experience uh, material and financial security and abundance, putting my attention on that every day, I'm closing my eyes and imagining it, feeling it, then I'm, I should start to notice whatever is interfering with that in the form of limiting beliefs and that will just surface in my mind. Things like, I'm not good enough. Uh, I'm not smart enough. I don't know enough. Life is too hard. In order to do that, I would have to sell my soul. Uh, you know, uh, rich people are bad. On and on, right? These kinds of things might surface. So obviously, if those things are getting my attention, then my attention is not going to my intention. See how that works? So I have a desired outcome. My I am financially and materially secure and abundant. But then along the way, there are these obscurations in the form of limiting beliefs that say, I'm not good enough, rich people are bad, I'll never make it, etc. And they they have enough charge that they get my attention, so my attention is not going to my intention. So I need to clear them, I need to release them. As I said, understand the power of your intention is such that if you simply have clarity of intention that those are now released, I completely release them and I allow my attention to go directly to my desired outcome and remain there with full confidence, then it is so. But again, most of us don't have that confidence yet. So what you can do uh, to, in, in, as an intermediate step is write down those limiting beliefs that come up as you're putting your attention daily on your desired outcome. Just notice what surfaces and interferes. Write them down. Don't censor yourself. So this really important in this process. If you're, if you're, if the limiting belief comes up and says, I'm not good enough. And you say, oh, but I'm, but I'm plenty good. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm good enough. So I won't write that down. Well, then you're fooling yourself because if you have that belief, which you do, if it surfaced and you don't write it down, how are you going to clear it? You won't. So you, I mean, you have to at least acknowledge that it's there if you want to get rid of it, if you want to release it. So don't censor yourself. If it comes up, just write it down. Then use a process that will effectively release the beliefs. In this, you want to understand that what a belief is, is it's just an association. Fundamentally, it's an association between uh, a feeling and a meaning that you've given to it. So we can say a thought and a feeling. If that association, that's the fundamental association. If that does not exist, you don't have the belief. There, because whatever, remember, all the content that's there started out this talk in, in this way, just exploring that all the content in consciousness is just moving, coming, and going, and it doesn't mean anything, and it's not associated with anything else. So the thought and the feeling don't actually go together. But through repetition the association has formed for you. And so every time one appears in consciousness, the other also tags along and they seem to go together because they co-arise because of the association. So long as that association exists, it's likely that this will continue to create interference for you because it seems to have more substance. It gets your attention, right? It's like 
not just some insubstantial stuff floating by. Instead, it seems to have more substance to it because it's con it's a conglomerate. There's more there. These things are associated. They're co-arising. So you tend to give attention to it. You say, oh, what is that? Oh, that maybe that's a threat. Maybe that's something important. So your attention goes to it. So in order to release the belief, you just need to release the association. So any process that will release the association is an effective process. There are many such processes. Uh, I don't even, I'm not even going to pretend that I know all of them. I don't even know most of them. I don't even know that what I don't know. I just know that there's a lot that I don't know. Therefore, I surely don't know a lot about this. But um, I can tell you, as I told you last week, that re that to, to date, the most effective process that I have learned for releasing uh, limiting beliefs is based on the LEFCO method. And um, so I, I will at some point uh, have, have a more uh, intensive uh, exploration of that to help you go through that. I'm not going to try to give you that now because that would be not helpful. Um, but, but that's one process you could look into. Um, and, and that's the most effective process or method that I have found to date, um, that allows you to quickly and permanently release these beliefs. Um, but again, anything that releases the association. So you just want to realize that they don't go together. So another possibility is you just, just through being present and aware. So that same process of letting go that I described earlier can also be very helpful for this. It's just to see fundamentally all it is is a meaning that's been associated with a feeling, in some cases with some images, and in few, even fewer cases with some sounds or smells or tastes. But that's it. It's just an association. And these, these things don't actually go together. None of it actually meant anything ever. When that's totally clear, then the association is released and then that stuff is no longer there to obscure you putting your attention on your desired outcome. So that's how that can work. So as you clear away those things, then your ability to keep your attention on your intention and gain greater clarity about it increases dramatically. So don't overlook the importance of that. It's really important. So if you're really getting stuck because you say, I can't seem to ever get any more clarity on what I want, I just seem to be blocked then it's very likely, so likely as to be guaranteed that what's happening is that you have obscurations in the form of associations, i.e. beliefs that are interfering. And as you release those, then you will be able to actually keep your attention on your desired outcome and gain greater clarity on it. And as you do that, it becomes manifest. So that's the basic process. That's the power of your intention. That's the importance of doing that. If you're doing anything else without doing that, on a daily basis, according to me, you're fooling yourself. Uh, not to say some of those other things might not be useful and helpful along the way, but in terms of actually moving the needle on getting your manifesting your desired outcome, if you're not doing that much every day, then it's very difficult for you to achieve success in it because you have to understand that's the fundamental process that's going on is that you create through your attention on the intention. The intention is the creation itself. It's not separate from the, the creation. So if you're not putting attention on it, thereby giving energy to it, uh, then you're not creating that. So I hope that that's clear how fundamentally important that is and why this is one of the most important things you can do. And it's so simple. So just do it each day. And you don't have to, uh, you don't have to have, like I said, you don't have to have uh, like psychedelic experiences. You don't have to feel anything particularly about it. You don't have to be overwhelmed with incredible insights. It doesn't have to be like any of that. You might, on a day-to-day -day basis, you might feel like nothing is happening. You might feel lousy from day to day. It doesn't matter. You just have to continue to practice because if you do that, even for just a few minutes, you will get better at it each and every day, a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better because that's how things work. So if you're waiting 
to have the just right experience or the just right feeling and you're not experiencing that and then you give up because you say it's not working, then you're fooling yourself. It, it is working because we have to define what working means. Working means that you're putting your attention on it. Therefore, energy is going to it. Therefore, you're getting, it's growing. You're getting better at it. You're, you're gaining more clarity and greater skill. That's what working means. It would be like if you were, uh, you know, one, one year old and you started practicing walking and then you said, it's not working. And then you just stopped because you said, it's not working. Well, uh, yeah, it's not working anymore because you stopped. But the thing is, if you just keep at it, it, it is working by definition and you're getting better at it. On a day-to-day -day basis, you might not have a great indication of that, right? Like again, if day-to-day -day, as you were learning how to walk, and you might not have had huge breakthroughs, right? You might have fallen on your ass the same one day as you did the day before. You might have said, gee, it doesn't seem like anything is different. But by continuing to apply yourself to it, eventually you learn to walk. It's the same with everything. So don't give up on something because you say it's not working. You don't have the eyes to see to judge whether it's working. You just have to understand how the, what the basic process is, the basic mechanism. It works when you do it. If you just put your attention on the thing, it gets the energy and it grows. You will get better, gain more skill, more confidence. Things will improve. You just have to be consistent about it. So every day, give at least a few minutes to that simple exercise and you will see results. There's no other way around it. So hopefully that's clear. Uh, I'm going to wrap up the talk now. For those who uh, are here live, I'm happy to stay on for group coaching for those who are watching this on YouTube, a uh, few notes. Number one, if you're interested in joining these calls live, you're welcome to do so. And you can get that information on how to join live by going to my website, joeylot.com and signing up for the newsletter. Um, second thing is uh, I am still offering free introductory coaching calls, uh, which can be very helpful and life-changing. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to um, learn more and sign up at joeylot.com slash intro, I-N-T-R-O. The, so just a note about this, because people get confused, so I want to clear it up for people. So on my calendar, I allow people to book sessions up to two weeks in advance. So the availability on my calendar is for two weeks only. The calendar show if if all the sessions for two weeks are booked, my calendar will show zero availability. It doesn't matter how far into the future you look, there will be no availability. The reason is that I only allow people to book two weeks in advance. So it's a quirk of the calendar, I guess. I don't know, but don't be confused by that. What that All that means is that all of the available sessions have been booked for the next two weeks. That does not mean there will never be any, any availability. In fact, Every weekday, new sessions will open up for two weeks in a, two weeks from then, right? So if it's today's Monday, uh, that means that today on my calendar, new sessions, new availabilities will open up for two weeks from today, whatever that date is. And um, so if you keep checking back and you don't find any, that just means other people got there before you. And I don't know what time uh, those the calendar makes new things available each day. I really don't know. Um, but just now you have that information. So that's how that works. So those are available. You just have to, they, they go quickly. First come, first serve. And um, for those who are interested in a uh, supported guided process for developing a simple, sustainable daily routine that will allow you to achieve great success in your life, whatever your goals are, uh, you may be interested in the Manifesting Truth program that I offer. It is a paid program. You can find out more at uh, joeylot.com slash manifesting-truth. And I'll provide a link to all of these things in the description below on YouTube. So that's it for, uh, for, the, for this part. Uh, blessings to you all. And I'll see you next time.